The Revelation hip system features press-fit titanium stems designed to reconstruct proximal femoral anatomy and proximally load the femur. The femoral component's lateral flare engages the cortex at the intersection point of the intended femoral neck axis and the lateral femoral cortex. This video is supplemental to the written surgical technique, which should be used before performing surgery. Preoperative templating is critical to properly placing the prosthesis. With preoperative templating, we identify the greater trochanter as the reproducible point of reference. The greater trochanter is easy to identify as a surgical landmark. Using an x-ray, we start by identifying two points, the tip of the greater trochanter and the hip joint's intended center of rotation. We take a straight edge along the lateral aspect of the femur and connect these two points. Next, we identify the middle of the femoral neck and draw a line from the center of the hip joint through the middle of the femoral neck intersecting the lateral femoral cortex. This point of intersection defines where to engage the prosthesis on the lateral side. Having identified this point, we can choose the proper size component to fit the canal and reproduce the appropriate neck length to reconstruct the femur in surgery. We then take the templates and sequentially overlaying successively larger templates, identify the correct size for the diaphysis as well as for the neck and the offset. In this case, we have templated for a size 12 prosthesis. These proportions are then translated during surgery by placing an osteotomy guide to mark the appropriate level for the osteotomy on the femoral neck. We start by placing the appropriately sized osteotomy guide carefully along the femur and aligning it to avoid varus positioning. The zero line is aligned with the greater trochanter to reproduce the proper position of the osteotomy and to recreate the appropriate neck length for reconstruction. The osteotomy may appear to be further distal than with some other stem designs. However, an appropriate osteotomy will allow us to properly position the prosthesis to load the medial and lateral endosteal surfaces and thus promote long-term bone preservation. Using the box osteotome, cortical bone from the superior lateral aspect of the femoral neck can be removed to allow access to the medullary canal. We begin reaming the canal by inserting the canal finder straight into the medullary canal, avoiding varus positioning or flexion. Starting with the smallest reamer, we progress in size until we have made reasonable contact with corticocancellous bone. The reamers are inserted until the notch reaches the osteotomy level. As necessary, progress to the next size reamer. We can approximate the size of the femoral canal on preoperative templates and later confirm the size during the surgery as the reamers bite against the endosteal cortical bone in the proximal diaphysis. It is important not to overream any of the cortical bone distally in the femur. The brooches are matched to the dimensions of the corresponding implant substrate, thus allowing a press fit over the proximal porous coating. Always begin broaching with the smallest available brooch size. It is important to avoid varus positioning or flexion while inserting the brooch. An optional modular slap hammer is available for impacting or extracting the brooch. Align the brooch along the longitudinal axis of the femur, being careful to remove lateral endosteal or cancellous bone that may build up under the lateral flare, preventing proper seating. The brooch should align with the level of the osteotomy to assure it seats properly and the preoperative plan succeeds. If the brooch is not seating easily and securely against the endosteal surfaces, there may be cancellous bone accumulated along the lateral margin that needs to be removed. A curette can be used to remove the additional bone. The brooch should align parallel to the posterior cortex of the femur and not lie rotated or anverted within the canal. Once the final brooch is seated, the brooch handle is removed. If necessary, use a calcar planer to remove any roughened edges and to level the calcar. At this point, we can perform a trial reduction. After the trial reduction, the brooch is removed. 
With the femoral canal prepared, we gently seat the prosthesis into the canal in the line of the brooch. Be careful to avoid torquing the prosthesis within the canal and putting excessive stress on the cortex of the proximal femur. The stem inserter is used and gently impacted to seat the prosthesis. Once the stem has been fully seated, a trial head is fitted to the prosthesis. The hip is reduced, leg length is checked, and range of motion is confirmed before final head size and neck length are selected. The femoral head impactor is used to secure the final femoral head prosthesis. Unless constrained by bone defects, patients are permitted to place as much weight as they can tolerate on the leg. To avoid compromising soft tissue healing, range of motion restrictions are only in flexion, adduction, and internal rotation during the initial six weeks post-surgery. Stationary bicycle and light progressive resisted exercise is permitted as tolerated, usually three to four weeks post-surgery.